Hello everyone, in today's video I want to respond to something that I saw over on the Discord that I thought was kind of interesting. And that was the effectiveness of the CSU-23-4, Shoka, also known as the Zeus, against guided munitions. So I sat there and going, hmm, this sounds like an interesting experiment, how are we going to set this one up? So the way I decided to do it was to build a really, really simple scenario over here inside of a lovely command, and then go try it out in two other different simulators. The first one we're going to try, of course, is DCS. We're going to try to replicate the experiment, and then we're going to go try it over in the SamSim, because, uh, you know, why not? So here we go. Uh, we have ourselves a little uh, Zeus 23 here. Uh, one thing I've done to this is I deleted one of the um, different ones here. Our battery only has a single unit. Now that's going to be kind of important, because when we go to blow the thing up, that means we're going to give a more fair shot here. So we're going to send in the F-16 here. He yeah, immediately spots something there down on the ground with the help of his buddy. I'm going to order him to fire a single GBU-31. We're going to have to remember that because when we get over to DCS afterwards, that's going to be the thing we're going to be trying to shoot at here. So after we fire our little one, I'm actually going to order him to break off. There it goes. Weapon on the way. So I'm going to switch back over to red side. And we have no difficulty at all immediately identifying this vampire. These things have huge radar signatures, so they're pretty easy to see. So we're going to take our Zeus here. We're going to go ahead and flip on the active radar. I'm going to press F1, and I'm actually going to give it maximum quality crew here because we desperately need to hit the thing before it's too late. All right, so let's see what we got here. So the weapon's on the way. Uh, we're picking it up every once in a while thanks to this tin shield, which is giving us a little bit of early warning here. If we did not have the tin shield, this would be tough. Now, the Zeus itself only has the capability, if we go poking down here, let's see here, Soviet Union, if we scroll down a little bit, Shulka Burst, it has a 50% chance of hitting something. Now, the ironic thing is if I use it against ground targets, it's dynamite. Against uh, land targets, though, it's uh, not too bad, not too bad. All right, so we're coming in. We have not acquired it with the Shilka's radar. Keep in mind, the range on the Shilka is not great. I believe the uh, maximum performance, it shows it out to here, which is 30 nautical miles away-ish. I don't think so. <laughs> in another demonstration later on, I will prove to you how not reliable that is. So the weapon's coming in, the weapon's coming in. Okay, here we go. So any moment, this crew's going to open up. It'll probably be opening up. Right there, here it comes. 50, 23 million. It succeeded at blasting that J down clean out of the sky. No problem. Now, for the sake of science, uh, let's try this again with a Tunguska. All right, here we go. So we got F-16 coming in for another approach. Uh, we've gone ahead and seen the target. We're going to go ahead and do a F, uh, shift F1 here. Click on it. We're going to do one JDAM. We're immediately going to break out of the way there. We don't want to get too close to the Tunguska because it will slap this F-16 out of the air, especially only at 12,000 feet here. Going to get a little closer. We're still waiting for the OODA loop. Weapon away. There it goes. Get out. Run, 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 run. Otherwise, the Tunguska will ruin your day. All right, so the Tunguska, this is the SA-19, the Grissom is what we call it. This is actually the M model, which is a slightly improved version. It will immediately acquire it. Notice it's got about the same radar range as far as that stuff goes. And the cool thing with this system is it's actually a double system. You have SAMs as well as the AAA. So let's see what happens. Getting a little closer, in about a millisecond, this thing's going to open right up on that sucker. Go ahead and click on that one, order him to attack in case he's being slow. Right now the crews are trying to get the range gate set correctly. Uh, the range gate looks good. They're going to go switch over to the other mode. Do we have a line of sight issue? Let's see here. We're waiting for another one second. And now we should be able to get that rocket off. Okay, missile away. Now these things are really tricky. They're command guided, but you can use the visual channel like you can over in DCS, as we'll see in a minute. So my two SAMs, completely no effect. I could have predicted that. Now the 30 millimeter cannon kicks in. It has four of these and whack slapped it out of the sky. So clearly, they work pretty well. Uh, what happens when we get into DCS, though? All right, here we go. Sitting here comfortably inside our lovely system. Notice we have no search radar on this thing. I actually got to do this the hard way, which means I have to look. And my eyes are uh, decent, but they're not perfect. So intelligence says he's down there somewhere, and I'm just looking for some kind of black speck or something in the sky that... There he is. There he is. <laughs> Still got it. So remember, when scanning the sky, you want to use 10 degree intervals, and you want to make sure you use the center of your focus, no longer or less than about a second each zone. All right, so I have 16 buddies up there somewhere, and he's uh, got Litmus nice lined up here. He's got a very large bomb for us today, and we're going to do everything in our humiliating power here to try to do something about him. And um, I'm not terribly confident this is even possible, let alone my aim's going to be remotely good enough. Remember, um, when we do this in Sam Sam, I have the benefit of having an actual radar-guided system like a computer that will do most of the math for me. Uh, in this particular case, I'm sort of at the mercy of whatever ends up happening here. So let's see if he's gonna go ahead and start his dive. There's his dive right there, see it? That's the dive. And there it is. Oh my God, look at how tiny that is. Oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. See it? 
right of the cloud now. I'm basically keeping track on it the best I can. Oh, that's not fair. What am I supposed to do to hit that? Oh God, no, this ain't gonna work. Not gonna work. No, 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 no. Oh, I hit it. <laughs> I didn't think that was gonna go well, but I did hit it. I did hit it. So uh, let's try that with the tongue gusk and see what happens. All right, we have an actual working radar now. <laughs> now I don't have to guess. Nah, it's okay though. We're just gonna look out the window and see if we can find this darn thing. All right, where are you? I think you were somewhere around one nine or six here. Can I zoom in? Oh, I have no zoom in on this thing. Oh, there he is, right there. Starting my sweep. All right, I'm getting something, like something barely. Honestly, I do not see him. That was the one nice thing about the other airplane is I actually could see him at this point. At this point, I'm basically guessing. And this is like using the SA-8. Oh, there he is. Hello. All right, locking him up isn't too hard. Wow, he's 10 kilometers away. I can just get some stress out, I guess. Let's see here. Service! Woohoo! Now, the interesting thing is in DCS, these missiles are actually uh, not guided by uh, regular... Oh, he's just launched at me. Got it! Oh, this time I got it. This time I got it. Uh oh I lost it. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Not good. Not good. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think I tracked my own missile. <laughs> all right um yeah that didn't show up on radar so uh, all right let's go ahead over to sam sim and see if we can figure this one out i'm just going to throw out this would be a heck of a lot easier if i had something that had a real radar on it all right uh so our targets here are going to be these little things that are called meteor drones um they, they suck but uh, I, I, I might be able to hit one. I don't know. I'll get lucky some days. So getting this thing uh, started up, pretty straightforward process. Uh, basically, you have uh, major components. You have kind of the shooty part, which is over here. You have the computer part. Yes, this is a computer. You have the search radar part, which is over here. And then you have the range part of the radar over here. So there's a lot of pieces you got to get right in order to safely operate this thing. Um, that being said, it's kind of a fun platform. It just requires... Uh, Finesse, to say the least, but yeah, if you're a pretty good crew, this wouldn't be too, too bad. So if you're wondering what I'm waiting for right now is I'm actually waiting for the generator to come up. Ah, there it goes. Go ahead and get those gyros going immediately. If you waste time on the gyros, you will not be able to do much. So let's go ahead and fire on the two gun switches. We're gonna switch all those on. We're gonna fire on the master computer. We're also gonna come over here and we're gonna get the radar primed. Uh, this thing is an old school tube radar. Not a lot going on here. So unfortunately, uh, we're not gonna be able to get this thing instant. I have to kind of wait and sit around. I'm going to press the beep button. Uh, VKD VKD button, and we'll see exactly what that's going to do here. Everything else is warming up. You'll see all these little needles and dials start to crank themselves uh, once we do get ourselves a target lock. I'm going to reset my explosions here, um, but this thing here right there controls is when the ammunition blows itself up. Obviously, we want to make sure that's set correctly. I'm going to go ahead and release the neck. So now hopefully my green light's on. Click. Nice. We're going to go ahead and press the black key. This is going to turn on our radar. All right. This is what we get to see when we normally sit inside this thing. We have this little display here, little PPI, and all we do is we look around. If you're wondering what all these fuzzy things are right here, those are the tops of trees. Now, what I can do is I can adjust the elevation of the radar by tipping this up and down. Like you can see, I just ran the elevator, basically a radar straight down into the ground. And now I cannot unstick the radar. This radar is completely useless and completely broken. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, I got it. Good. It's not like the SAM 2. Whew. I almost freaked myself out for a second there. So let's go ahead and start looking around and see if you can see anything. Any of those things could be a target. Oh, 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 oh. And what's this? Let's go take a peek. Try to be a little more careful with the radar this time. And imagine if you were a GBU and you were launched at me and I'm trying to find you. Whoa, what was that? Whoa. Oh, I wish the controls were a little tighter in this. Uh, I don't have anything yet. Do you see anything? Mm, I don't know. I'm still looking around. We'll bring the tip of the radar down just a tiny bit here. Still looking. Still looking. Now, keep in mind, if the GBU were launched at me, I was dead already. Uh, still looking. Still looking. Oh, what was that? Is that something I can work with? No, definitely not. All right, you're sitting here going, wait, how are you supposed to spot the target? It's like, yeah, tell me about it. 
And let's see if we can bring the radar down a little bit. Mm, is that a target or is it just my imagination? Nope, that is my imagination again. All right. So imagine how many times I would have been killed by the JDAM is me desperately trying to uh, spot the target here. Bring myself back up and see if there's anything I can work with here. No, nah, nothing looks to be that. Well, what was that? Eh, I think I saw something for a second. Nope, that's nothing. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Eh, nope, that doesn't count either. Ugh, let me go switch on some Doppler filtering and see if that helps us out a little bit. Click. Eh, does that help? Actually, yeah, it does. Eh, the ground is still pretty solid. You can see I've uh, switched to Doppler filtering to try to make it a little bit easier to see things in the trees, but those trees and that low-level level clutter is literally blocking my view completely here. So I'm still basically guessing. Yeah, I'm going to go take a look around behind me, see if there's anything that's coming in that side. Whoa! No, those are all the sides of more trees. Yeah, so this is what you would normally be looking at uh, when you're trying to operate a Zeus like this. Normally, of course, you have a little camera and you can kind of look at the periscope to see if there's anything going on around you. But this is literally the little world and uh, you have to experience and try to interpret what you're looking at just by taking a look at little smidges here. I'm going to spin around this way, see if there's anything I'm missing in that direction. And it looks like I'm going to, whatever they launched at me is it hit me about 500 times at this point. Because nothing's flying out at me as something that is probably, oop, maybe that was something. Let me see. Uh, we'll try. I don't think it's moving, though. Nope. So that's not going to count either. So hopefully this demonstration proves just how incredibly interesting it is to see what the uh, simulation expects us to be able to do versus the actual reality of trying to coordinate a hit like that. Enjoy.